tonight on my team. It's our second sizzling sprint weekend of the season. Another moist weekend. <laughs> and also, how many of you aren't subscribed? Oh, uh, sorry, that wasn't in the... <clears throat> and can we put the front runners to the sword once again? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the F123 My Team Career Mode. Today, we are off to the Styrian Hills, the Austrian Grand Prix, the Red Bull Ring. It's going to screw me over, isn't it? This Red Bull Ring, I knew it. And already the fun begins because a chassis upgrade has failed on us. Yes, we did get two error upgrades, but the bald bean over here is going to turn into a very, very baked bean. As a result, we drop back below Haas in the performance index, but that's no matter because, I mean, look at the whole grid. It's the most condensed it's been all season. So with that in mind, and with the margins being so fine at Austria, what kind of mayhem can we produce in qualifying? Welcome to qualifying day, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we arrive at the Osterreich ring, as it was formerly known, the A1 ring, now the Red Bull ring, which means only one thing, we've lost. Or have we? Because this sexy vixen doesn't take no for an answer. You should see my Friday night record. Through the final corner and we are doing a short qualifying, I have actually remembered to do the correct format corresponding to the race distance, which is a 35 percenter. Through the first corner we go, missing the apex a little bit, but actually the car stays nice and planted as we then roar up the hill towards turn number three, even though it's technically turn two because that right there was not a corner. Into turn number three and we go actually quite wide, skidding on the way in. And yes, we get the exit all together, but that sliding is not going to do our time or world of favours whatsoever. So through the final corner, we transverse, we plummet down the hill towards the line and it is P10. It's P10. Okay then. I am calm. Nope. I'm actually calm. It doesn't sound like it. My voice might sound a bit vexed, but I am quite calm. We are still inside the top 10 despite everything. We know how close it is in Austria. So one more lap in anger at the end of this short qualifying to rectify things. Through turn number one then, we actually get closer to the apex this time, but somehow losing time on the exit. Even though I felt like I had a better flow through it, the momentum clearly not in my favour. So up the hill we go towards turn number three, this time absolutely nailing the braking point, nailing the apex. We gain all the time we lose under braking, almost on par with our time. So actually, we've gained half a tenth just in that corner and we're gaining time slowly on the straight as well down towards the next right hander let the car just slowly rotate in coax it through and we are now a tenth up on our time previously and a time gain like that could mean a world of difference here in austria going wide at the left hander doesn't mean a world of time gain here in austria but through the next left hander we get it all back together again we're just over one and a half tenths up on our previous lap and we have two more corners to get the maximum out of our qualifying session a bit wide into that corner keeping it within the lines though the final corner is great and with drs open it's just a tenth and a half's worth of improvement and we're gonna be p1 it's p9 it's p9 we weren't even close why did i actually bother so then um well considering my most recent run of form in these races that wasn't part of the script to be honest with you we are ninth place for the sprint race because remember it is a sprint weekend here at Austria so all is not lost and there are still yet more points up for grabs and of course qualifying isn't my strongest point so it's not all done and dusted yet looking down the rest of the field then looking at Zhou Guan Yu in 18th and uh, oh my god like Enzo you you actually killed me last time but lads you're oh, what the fuck he's left me speechless out of sheer uh disappointment but he has time to rectify that. It's time for the sprint. Ah! No mucking around, no waiting for the next bus stop. We're gonna make our own. Five red lights for the sprint. Lights out and away we go. Felt like an age before the lights finally went out, but we've gone for the soft in the sprint and it's proved to make dividends. A very decent start, even against those on soft, but under braking, we find ourselves nearly trounced by the Alpine until we turn defense into attack and send Perez for a hot dog. 
as if Austria actually do hot dogs. But now Lando Norris is our next target. Fainting to the inside and diving down the inside. Spearheading our charge straight away. Contact between Hamilton and Leclerc as there's yellow flags behind us. Everyone just trying to get through the Tesco car park at turn number three. Hamilton and Leclerc still side by side then. It's actually the Mercedes man that's slightly on the back foot having started on the medium tyres. And Leclerc proves that and we get it all crossed up. Trying to find a switchback. Norris has a fantastic run on us. Tries to go round the outside but we say no sir. You did not pay your mortgage. Naughty pillock. And so we remain ahead of the McLaren man and Perez actually re-overtakes him in that Red Bull car. Of course he's the championship leader and we are trying to chase him back down this weekend once again. The gap is marginal between us and the Mexican master of driving really slowly. But we are doing everything in our power to make sure that we get above him in the championship at the end of this weekend and then set about eating up the miles. Although based on qualifying, it was pretty ominous, let's be honest. Not the greatest showing, ninth place, where before we've had three pole positions in a row. At Monaco, at Spain, at Canada, in Austria, we're nowhere near. We're at the bottom end of the top ten. Meanwhile, Hamilton and Leclerc, sorry, going side by side once again. And we say, I'll have a piece of that cake. It's mighty scrumptious. And we get the switch back on Leclerc. But somehow his straight line speed is absolutely lethal. This was when the patch was, ha was updated. I don't know what I'm saying, but down the inside of the Ferrari man. A bit of Tokyo drifting on the exit. And with style points to our name, we breeze past the Ferrari man. Verstappen, though, is absolutely running. What, what drugs is he? Oh, God, Leclerc's onto us as well. It's all happening. He goes, tries to go around the outside, but we chop that avenue off before he can even have a whiff at it. And we remain in P5. And I need a breath because I'm going lightheaded. Oh. No matter, I am awake now. I recover very easily. Into turn number three once again, then DRS, of course, enabled on this lap, and Leclerc will not have a helping of DRS to assist him in his charge in the Ferrari car. The prancing horse has indeed been infused with Ket. I'll tell you what else is on drugs, the AI, all of them, because since the patch, they're now artificially fast in a straight line. Codemasters don't know how to do game design. Through turn one, we get it all crossed up on the sausage on the exit. All crossed up on the sausage, you say? Well, anyway, uh, chasing down Lewis Hamilton and there's battling going on up ahead. It's actually Sainz versus George Russell because at this point, the mediums are actually crossing over and firing up into life. The soft tyre runners, myself included, are suddenly struggling to bite into the bitumen in the same way as we might have intended. Underneath the Pirelli sponsorship, it's a surprise that, it's a surprise that hasn't exploded. Through the right-hander on the exit, again having to catch another slide and... I know we're in P5, but things just aren't going my way in this sprint race. On to lap number six, nearly on to lap number seven, because Star Wars 8 was more interesting than what happened in those couple of laps. Going very wide in the last couple of corners, we're really not liking this track whatsoever. And Leclerc compounds our misery even more, as he breezes past with DRS, not what we had planned. But as soon as he overtakes, he gets a slide on on the exit. So despite all the hard work that Charles Leclerc has done, he crosses it all up on the first possible opportunity. And we squeeze him to the inside just to deter him from trying to make a senile dive bomb. But this is where it gets frisky. Hamilton, Sainz, Russell all bunching themselves up because Russell has got past Sainz. So the medium is now, like I said, crossing over. Now they really have. And we're smelling blood in the water, breaking as late as we dare, trying to run rings around Sir Lewis Hamilton, try and get the traction down. No, no, we don't. That's just painful. And Sainz is actually going back for the move on Russell. Round the outside, the Ferrari man tries to go, but those softs aren't going to comply as much as they did at, say, the beginning of the race. And Russell says, thank you very much. Try and remortgage that position another day, son. And Hamilton now trying to go for the move on Sainz. We make a... Uh, a, a move that's too late on Leclerc, quite frankly. That's that's a 35-second penalty for Ocon there. Hamilton takes it compromised, though, by the battling with Sainz, and we've got his slipstream, but look at the drugs the AI are taking in a straight line. Adi Hash gives you speed. Leclerc now trying to attack. We turn defence into attack as Sainz is all crossed up. We make contact with the Ferrari, and Leclerc tries to go for a gap that was always going to close. DRS, though, on Carlos Sainz. Smooth operation. Is it going to be one from us? Yes, it will. Down the inside we go. And on the last lap of the Grand Prix, or of the sprint race, should I say, we do just make it up into P4. After all of the battling, the grueling hard work, the blood, sweat and tears that we've had to put into this sprint race, we're not going to be able to get past Hamilton. Our softs are goosed at this point. I couldn't even feel the car underneath me. It was that bad. 
but we're going to just try and bring it home through these last few corners. Yes, the AI are on crack, quite frankly, and they'll be arrested at the end of the race, which is... I, I should win, actually. Oh my. Unfortunately, with the FIA around, justice never prevails. We move to the middle of the track for the final time. Verstappen will win the sprint race, but for us, after some grueling and hard-fought battles, it's P4 in the sprint race. And you know what? I'll absolutely take that. Qualifying didn't give us the best indication of having the greatest pace, but I am very optimistic if that's what we can do in the sprint race. Yes, it did mean that others had to battle for us to get it. But you know what? At the end of the day, we did the work. We put in the graft. And we have made it absolutely work. Meanwhile, someone who didn't make it work, Lando Norris, plum last. I forgot to mention this, but he got damaged really early on in the race. No idea how. Probably battling with Perez because he's bad. And he had a massive train of cars behind him and decided to pit on the last lap. Because McLaren are smart. So Lando Norris starts absolutely dead last for this race weekend. Piastri has a fighting chance of points. For us, though, we could have a fighting chance of victory. So let's see what we can do. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. It's race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. We are just a few moments away from lights out and our drivers thinking about navigating the Nicky Lauda curve as it was renamed in 2019 in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Grim Reaper, Sainz, Leclerc, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Russell, Hulkenberg, Albert, Magnussen, Bottas, Sonoda, Joe, Fittipaldi, De Vries, Sargent, and Lando Norris starts from the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Grim Reaper. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. With grid penalties, we're promoted to P3. So let's see what we can do. Five red lights. Lights out and away we go. And unlike the sprint, Hamilton caught off guard completely, expecting that longer start light time. And we take full advantage, but he dives down the inside straight away, tries to deter us. Instead, it's sights behind him that makes the move up into P3 for the scooter here. Fantastic start. Verstappen starting on hards. Uh, 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 oh, this just in, folks. Verstappen lacks synapses. The hard tyres aren't an inspired decision because it's going to rain halfway through the race. So I really don't know what he's done there. But let's revel in our success for a brief moment. Five red lights on. Away they go. Our reactions are on point and we absolutely fly away from the starting blocks. Hamilton's slow to react. And as a result, we curtail his charge down the inside of us. And Sykes is the one that cleanly goes round the outside. And that could prove to be a good move into turn one. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So... Be on the lookout for that as this race goes on. But up into P2 for us. Russell, though, all to do. He's down to P13. Moves up to P11. But someone who's moving up as well, his teammate, Sir Lewis Hamilton, on the soft tyres, easily breezes round Carlos Sites, running rings around these fellas. It's embarrassing for them. Like I said, on the soft, contrary to what he did in the sprint where he was on the mediums. So Hamilton feeling like the rain's going to come even earlier and he's going to make the most of the pace of that Mercedes car. And Sites now under pressure from Perez for a brief moment. But with DRS not enabled, Perez can't do nothing. End of lap number two then, and we're well within range of attacking Verstappen as DRS enabled on this lap. And we have the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So this is looking excellent. Uh, we don't have the fastest lap. Screw that. We don't need that in this race. We just need to overtake the fat back of Max Verstappen. And when I see that cake, I will eat DRS. We're not going to get past on this lap, but it's okay. End of lap number three. And we are closer than we were on the last lap. But oh God. Hamilton's got a great run on those soft tyres, and he's down the inside. Oh, he's through. That's that's not good. All right, lap number four, sit rep. Uh, we're slow. 
we are slow. Hamilton and Verstappen are getting away from us. And Hamilton is putting Verstappen under an incomprehensible amount of pressure. My goodness, those softs are fired up. They say pressure makes diamonds. And Hamilton's trying to become that gem today. Down the inside he goes. Mercedes going for the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. But the outside line proves to be the better choice. And with DRS, we're going to breeze past Sir Lewis once again. And P2 is ours to remortgage. We say thank you very much. Do what we did to Leclerc in the sprint. Hamilton has none of that. Down the inside. Incredible from Sir Lewis. Banzai move like a bullet from a gun. He absolutely zaps one down the inside. And with DRS, we are still not going to get past. Hamilton has done an incredible job there to keep P2 with some wonderful defensive driving and retaliation driving as well. Expecting some rain soon. Expect the first drops in the next few minutes. Well, there you go then. I was just talking about it on lap number one. And yes, the rain will be here in, quote, a few minutes' time, which means if you're on hard tyres, you better start crying. So, through the first corner we go again. Hamilton cleverly buys his time this time. And with DRS wide open, look up ahead. He's going for the move. Hamilton goes down over Stappen. I tell them to keep that off the track. But Hamilton is up into the lead of this Grand Prix. Verstappen gets it all crossed up at turn number three. And with a subduous switchback and DRS and combering the Energizer Bunny, we make it up into P2 now. Fantastic stuff. Lap number seven of this race and things just got even more interesting. Our main objective now is to try and keep up with Hamilton. That's going to be the crucial thing because those softs seem to be working so well for the Mercedes driver. Like they just managed to coax the mediums in at the right time in the sprint. And he's doing the same even to the soft tyres in the main event. And at the Red Bull ring, the rampant, raging bulls behind us have had their horns blunted. Goodness me, what on earth's happened there? Third and fourth, Perez not even near this top three conundrum, quite frankly. And it is a conundrum because Verstappen's going to cause us all kinds of problems. We try and squeeze him to the outside. He actually just put packs out of the move, to be honest with you. Because once again, he knows that turn three is the prime overtaking opportunity. But with DRS on Sir Lewis, we should be okay and actually free from attack from Max Verstappen. And yes, indeed, we do keep... P2 for the moment, but we're chasing down the lead. Plowing onto lap number nine almost like a combine harvester. The clouds really are descending gloom and doom onto the Austrian circuit. And we're closer than we have ever been to Lewis Hamilton as we head in towards turn number one. Clipping the curb a little bit, getting the car straightened out. It's decent traction, but the gap between ourselves and Hamilton and equalised to Verstappen is actually, it's just balanced, to be honest with you. So we actually wait, we bide our time. But Verstappen is looking really punchy. And down the inside he goes. We get it all crossed up on the brakes and make contact with his front left tyre. And that could be front wing damage in this race. And that is not what we need at the moment. No word from our engineer as to whether we have damage. So I carry on my merry way trying to catch up to Sir Lewis. Doesn't seem like it's affecting us too badly. But on board with Verstappen then the replay. Opportunistic as ever, the double world champion. Down the inside, he sends it there. We couldn't actually see the point of contact, but locking up the brakes midway through the corner, grazing the front right end plate. And that could be damage for us in this race. Meanwhile, I'm just hoping for something interesting to happen, you know? Oh! And there it is. The rain begins to descend on the Austrian circuit then. And we have to be very wary now of what we do. Of course, DRS still enabled, but the track's going to get slipperier and slipperier all the time in this race. Weather report is just, well, it's obviously the slicks are quicker. But actually, I was trying to find out my vehicle condition, but Stappen trying to go down the inside, and I'd be certain I've got damage. Find that front wing is going to need replacing if it takes too much damage. Gap to your teammate behind is 23.4 seconds. Tire condition still looking good. Right, well, can we just address the elephant in the room quickly? And by the room, I mean the circuit. Enzo, how are you already 20 seconds behind me? What are you... Are you, are you, are you, are you driving a cricket? No time to contemplate that, though. We do have front wing damage, which has just been confirmed. And we tried to get the jump on Hamilton at the exit, but nothing doing there. So it is Sir Lewis that leads from us, from Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Alonso. Russell already up to eighth in this race, so kudos to him. What a recovery, rec recovery he's been having. Norris, though, still in plum last. He's just Things have not gone his way at all this weekend. Lap number 11, though. Oh, my goodness me. Look how wet it is. And I've got to say here... 
rather heartbreakingly, the engineer gave us the strategy call to come into the pits and fit the Inters on while on the start-finish straight. And you can see the ramifications of that. One, DRS disabled, and two, the amount of WRCing we did round that straight, which doesn't make any sense, but it does when you consider it's wet, as we try and go around the outside of Hamilton. We actually might get it done here, you know. Randomly, we're going to get the lead of this race, although going wide into the left-hander probably wasn't on the agenda. Verstappen now goes for the move, and as we head into the left-hander, oh, contact, mate, no! Verstappen! It felt like he jinked right, but I probably just turned into him, to be honest, out of desperation more than anything else. And now we have real problems with our front wing. Of course, we have to box at the end of this lap anyway to fit the intermediate tyres on, but that is the last thing we needed to do in the grand scheme of things, trying to get the best entry into the pit lane possible, but with hardly any front wing and wet conditions, that's going to prove very tricky indeed. Luckily, we do make it in, and we're going to head into our pit box. Can we get a purple time? You guessed it. Yes, we do. Thanks again, Cristiano. I actually can't hear. I'm numb to the pain. But front wing being changed. As you can see, this is just so painful. Hamilton and Verstappen, there they go. And we're going to get jumped by not only Leclerc, but Perez as well. What should have been a 7.7 .7 second stop. We had two seconds extra. My pit crew are a bunch of chameleons. Absolute lemonheads. And now we have it all to do on Sergio Perez. Unbelievable. But of course, we know how we've done in intermediate conditions this season, in the wet conditions this season, how good we've been. So we're not going to waste any time trying to get past the Red Bull driver and then setting our sights on the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc up ahead. So we get a great exit out of turn number three. Absolutely wonderful. The red light on Perez flashing. Red light spells danger for him because we are going to launch it down the inside of the Red Bull driver and the championship leader has been displaced straight away, no problems at all, up into P6 and now we can try and set about getting Charles Leclerc, the gap just about th uh, three and a half seconds I think it is, the, the, my, has, it might, listen my screen has about as much pixels as my microwave so you're going to have to bear with me here, but we gain so much time off the exit of turn number three. Traction is where we're going to find the time in the wet conditions as the AI is struggling to plant the power down, apparently. We're finding the coaxing, we're finding the control, the comfort setting that we need to just be a little bit cautious on the throttle pedal. We're just anxiously asking on the weather update as well because apparently it's going to be wet tyres later on in this race. So as if I didn't have any more problems to worry about. No, it's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm not crying. My blood pressure is fine. Lap number 14, my throat has a skill issue. What's new? Up ahead, gap to Leclerc is about three seconds, but unfortunately going wide into turn three doesn't do us any favours whatsoever. So as we try and zestify our race, here's what's happening. Sites is actually leading this Grand Prix after pitting a lap before all of us. Verstappen and Hamilton, though, in hot pursuit. And we are trying to get onto the back of Leclerc as quickly as... No! 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 Oh my god, no! No, 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 you're joking. No! No! No freaking way, man! Oh my, nah, this is unacceptable. This is actually unacceptable. Two mechanical failures in three races. One I was going for the win. One I was trying to chase back down. Probably at least a podium in this race. And now we're going to get absolutely stuff all. Unbelievable. My steering has skill issues as well. I've got aliens controlling my car. Oh, for God's, right. <sighs> for God's, I can't believe this, man. Seriously. That's two. That's two now. Two in three races. I'm watching you. Gearbox in the Spanish Grand Prix. Complete engine failure. Catastrophic failure here in Austria. Oh, my God. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria and a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Wow, a Red Bull won at the Red Bull ring. I, I said it, didn't I? I said it. I told you. Wow. Thumbs up. Yeah, I've got enough of those trophies. You know what? You know what? Shove a snitzel where the sun don't shine, Max Verstappen. That's what I think. Unbelievable. We should have been up there, I think. I think we genuinely could have got back up there as well. 
We've got nothing to show for it, though. Hamilton, though, great job in his Mercedes, I must say, to get P2. Leclerc gets another podium for Ferrari. P3 again for the Monegas driver. <sighs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Mercedes, I'm watching you. I said it. Two failures in three races is utterly unacceptable. And I'm genuinely serious when I mean that. Yes, we get five points from this weekend, so it's not all completely lost, courtesy of the sprint race. But even so... That is, that is just unbelievable. That's catastrophic luck for us, if anything else. And also, Mercedes need to assess the reliability of their engines very, very quickly indeed. Unbelievable. Right, look, okay. Enzo, by the way, got P15 after all of that. So even though we didn't do very well, he still didn't get points. So he can, he can just do one. Also, when our fastest lap is a second and a half quicker than his... I think he might need to reassess his career. Hulkenberg, though, in the house, gets yet more points for the American team. Mercedes with a double score. Red Bull with a big double score. And what that means in the standings, Verstappen now inherits the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Perez, despite actually getting more points than us during the course of the weekend, hasn't opened up that much of a gap. So, despite everything, all hope is not lost, considering the Drivers' Championship. Yes, it's a setback, but we deal with setbacks. We cope with setbacks. We come back swinging, and we're going to spin their jaws. Still my teammate and a couple of others yet to score points. Both Williams still yet to score points. Stroll is, is bad, basically. I have to highlight his performances, because Alonso is doing miracles in that car. Stroll is nowhere. Norris as well not getting points, which is unbelievable, considering... But in the Constructors, that's where things get really bad for us. We're down again to P4, not joined with anyone, and I'm going to jump off. The you know what? You know what? Let me just check. Where where's, where's the nearest bridge, lad? Oh, God. That is not a sight I wanted to see. Oh, j just get it. Get it. Get it off my screen right now. It's not all bad news, though, because we don't actually lose a claim, despite our internal combustion engine turning into an internally combusting engine. And also, Lupo Industries, because we got a top four in the sprint race, we get the payout from them. So, in the end, despite everything, we walk away from this weekend with almost two million dollars. Right, go on then. Uh, you know what, Mr. Clean, I'm not in the mood. I'm going to scalp you, my friend. It's the MG UK that's failed. Just, uh, just because, of course, it is the MG UK. What else would it be? And wh while the gearbox was at 80% and could actually be used... That's casserole itself, the MG UK, and that's a surprise given the fact it was raining. So actually, the moisture should have helped to cool it down. So the science isn't sciencing, but it doesn't matter because we we're, we get no points from this weekend and from Spain as well. And it's kind of even more heartbreaking here because I felt we had real pace to make a difference to the rest of our race. So there you go, guys. More heartbreak here in the Styrian Hills. What should have been the top of the peak ends up at the lowest trough, but no matter. Next time out, we head to the British Grand Prix, where we intend to cause massive mayhem. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching round number 10 of the My Team journey. If you did enjoy my pain and suffering, then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to this channel. Content coming to your screens every single day. My goodness me, day number 11 this is, and we are well and truly rocketing along. But... Once again, I thank you for watching. Until the next video, whatever it may be, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.